da bando so so shesh ke fratala mangra diga da batala baya asora diga shala mangra diga sela manda lego do so pena esus frapana Some miracle service. Somebody pray from the depth of your heart. God is said to move mightily in our midst this morning. God is said to do something great and mighty in our midst this morning. We are seeing the sick healed. We are seeing miracles. We are seeing signs. We are seeing wonders. Today, today, somebody pray from your spirit. Pray from your spirit. Set your eyes on Jesus. Set your eyes on Jesus and pray from the depth of your heart. I de bonda su so cole fra mina cabala da baia a sheda banda leto con so che fra bile manda a ra de bonda su so cole banda leto coraba a sheda bambra la di gasole fra bede gadea e so te co so radi banandea a so te capara da bala da baia e sheda banda so so cope a re de bonda su so copela a sa te fra bala da baia a sheda fra mende leto che pana a sa te le ba Anda suso ke pala asara da 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 ba ya ese te no no 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 oro da no monda suso ke pala ese de bele vramene le koboro ese te memba 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 oro da manda ke pala Setora mimba bala da baya, aseta para na mande, eso sofra pande, arwatana, 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 eso la bonda suze ke pa, asa na mande na da baya, eso de bambra, eso de bambra, eso de bambra, eso de bambra, eso de bambra. Shoda bambra, shoda bambra, Lord, arada da na 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 manda, so far da ba da, asi ananda, 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 arada nande, iso parada, Lord, shoda ba ba ba, afra bande, so samamba parada, shoda parada. Somebody give God a shout. He is risen. Hallelujah.
This morning, may you please be seated. Shortly, we'll be rising up to pray. Please open your Bibles to Psalm 77 from verse 11 to 14. Psalm 77 from, from verse 11 to 14. The Bible says, I will remember the works of the Lord. Surely, I will remember thy works of the wonders of old. I will meditate also of all thy work and talk of thy doings. Thy way, O oh God, is in the sanctuary. Who is so great a God as our God? Who is so great a God like our God? Thou art the God that doest wonders. Thou hast declared thy strength among thy people who believes the word of the Lord this morning. Shall we rise? Shall we please stand up our feet and remember? And so we are going to thank the Lord. We're going to say, Father, Father, we thank you for the mighty miracles and wonders we always see at every miracle service. With your servant, Pastor Ayo Ajani. Father, we thank you for the mighty miracles and wonders we always see at every miracle service with your servant, Pastor Ayo Ajani. Lord, we thank you for indeed you are mighty in our midst. Say, Lord, we thank you for indeed, you are mighty in our midst. Are we ready to bless the name of the Lord? Open your mouths and bless God this morning. And say, Lord, we thank you. In the brothers, we remember thy works. We remember thy hands. So we thank you. We thank you for what you have done in time past. We thank you for what you will do today. We'll remember your wonders. We'll remember your hand. We thank you for your mighty miracles. We thank you for your wonders. We give you the praise, oh God. Let the children of the Lord open their hearts and cry out. And bless the name of the Lord this morning. Say, Lord, we give you the praise. You are mighty in our midst. You are mighty in our midst. Of a truth, you are our God. Of a truth, you do us wonders. Of a truth, you run mighty miracles. We give you the praise. Lift up your hands and bless the name of the Lord. Go to remember his mighty works. Go to remember his mighty works. Le rashkade go bande le deveske baya. Redesh kani la yande. Isabra de ke baya. Isabra de ke baya. Le bredosh kani la deske ni na baya. Rebato mana. 
Rebato Manaya, Rebato Manaya. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for you've brought mighty miracles and wonders in our place. We always see. Oh, Meroshka Dabati, the Prebeto Makishka Nala Nadesi Bata. Let your hearts bless the name of the Lord this morning. We call to remember us your doings, O God. We call to remember us thy works. And we thank you. We thank you for your wonders. We thank you for your miracles. Indeed, you are mighty in our midst. Thank you, Father. We say thank you. Today's service would be miracles flooded. In the name of Jesus. And in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Glory to Jesus. Right where you are, can you lift your hands and just bless the name of the Lord? Oh, the psalmist says, enter his gates with thanksgiving. That is how we access the throne room of God. Can we say thank you, Jesus, for you are a good father. 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 Rosha namando sonama. Kusabahai. Oh, glory to God. I bless you, Lord, you are holy. And forever you are God. We bless you, Lord, you are holy. And forever you are raise it up we bless you say we bless you lord you are oh and forever lord and forever you are god we bless you jesus we bless you lord oh can somebody register your presence this morning and forever you are God. See, I bless you, Lord, you are holy. Oh, 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 oh. And forever. Bless you, Lord, you are holy. Oh, oh. and forever. I bless you, Lord, you were faithful, Lord. Oh, and forever, God. I bless you, Lord, you were faithful. You were so faithful. And forever. I bless you, Lord, you are holy. And forever I Oh, we bless you, Jesus We bless you, Jesus And forever And forever Say, I bless you, Lord, you are whole And forever Bless you, Lord, you are holy. And forever, and forever, and forever, say hallelujah. Oh, come on. Someone to lift your wings and bless the Lord. Oh, Raise it up, say, ah, There's no one one but you, Lord. Hey. Only you deserves the worship. So we give you all the worship. We've come with the fruits of our lips, Jesus. And forever, oh, Rising off the
the sun to the setting of the same. Your name, your name is to be Your name, your name, your name. Can we raise it up one more time? Hey, ah, ah, ah. From the rising of the sun to the setting of the same. says, he that, he therefore that ministereth to you the spirit and walketh miracles amongst you, doeth he it by the works of the law or by the hearing of faith. Hallelujah. Short Lord shall be rising saying, Father, come say, Father, as your servant, Pastor Ayewa Jani, ministers today, everyone present, both online and on site, will receive the ministry of the Holy Spirit in every area of need. I declare today, every need is met. I receive my own miracle. Today I will testify. Somebody jump on your feet and cry to God this morning from the depth of your heart, church. Father, as your servant ministers today, everyone present, both online, and on site will receive the ministry of the Holy Spirit in every area of need. Everyone present, oh God, online and on site, Lord, that will receive the ministry of the Holy Spirit in every area of need. Lord, I declare that today every need is met. I declare today every need is met. Lord, today every need is met. I receive my own miracle. I receive my own miracle. I receive my own miracle. Somebody pray from the depth of your heart. Lord, of someone ministers today. Every need is met. Every need is met. Every need is met, oh God. Every need is met, oh God. Every need is met, oh God. That the Holy Ghost will minister to people at the point of their need. Nobody will go back the same way by the ministry of the Holy Spirit. Nobody will go back the same way. Nobody will go back the same way, oh God. Nobody will go back the same way. Somebody pray from your heart. Somebody pray with all desire. The effectual prayer of a precious man make tremendous power available. Father, we decree as your servant ministers, oh God, that the Holy Spirit will meet everyone, both online and on site, at the point of your need. Every need shall be met. Petra pray, Petra pray, somebody pray with the depth of your heart, with the whole of your mind. Lord, everyone in service today will receive your miracle. Everyone in service today, but online and on site, oh God, they receive your miracle. They receive your miracle. Holy Spirit, you meet everyone present at the point of your name. At the point of your need, at the point of your need, at the point of your need, oh God, at the point of your need, oh God, at the point of our needs, 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 Shalabana Katabaya, a Sephram in the Leko Paradabaya, a Samanda Latte Framena. Nobody will live service without a touch from the Holy Spirit. Nobody will leave church without a touch 
Testimonies, praise God. The Lord is at work in the house of Petra. Amen. Come on, the Lord is at work in the house of Petra. Glory to God. This first testimony is by Brother I.K. Brother I.K. says, I want to thank God for what he has done in my life through the ministry of his servant, Pastor Ayo Ajani. I got married in 2023, and after our wedding, my wife had to relocate to the UK to commence her pre-registration year as an optometrist. Her sponsorship for the program came with a spousal visa, but I thought it best to secure a job before joining her. I started applying for jobs, and it was rejection after rejection. I finally secured an interview with one of the leading energy firms in the UK, and I was excited. However, the interview did not go as great as I expected, and I felt I had lost a great opportunity. I was deeply discouraged. However... Despite my mind ruling me out of the opportunity, my heart still stayed on it. The next day, I had a nudging in my heart to listen to any of the messages from the festival convention, the festival convention 2023. I opened the Telegram channel, and the first message I saw was overwhelming help. My God, that message was directly for me. I listened. I prayed along with God's servant, and received every prophetic word. Brothers and sisters, the prophetic word will come to you today. You would listen, pray along, and receive. Hallelujah. He says, that was the turning point in my life. After listening to the message, I had a prompting in my heart to release a seed. I obeyed and sowed my seed while holding on to the prophetic word of overwhelming help. The first miracle was that I received an email inviting me to a second stage interview. Hallelujah. Overwhelming help. <laughs> Despite rescheduling twice, the interview eventually held and it was 90 minutes of pure grilling. <laughs> Imagine an interview for 90 minutes. But overwhelming help was working. Hallelujah. I like the but, but God. Hallelujah. To God be the glory. I was notified as the preferred candidate and received my offer for the role in February. God deeply satisfied me with this one because it is in my preferred industry, energy, and preferred career path, project management. The pay is solid. I like that one. And even came with a car as well. My bags are neatly arranged to go and join my wife. <clears throat> Indeed, God is merciful and kind to me. I thank God for, for fulfilling the overwhelming help prophecy in my life, spoken through the mouth of his servant, and I return to give him all the play, praise. Hallelujah! <clears throat> Glory to God. A second testimony by Sister D.O. She says, some years ago, I found out I had fibroids, but I was told it was nothing to worry about. However, over the years, they grew and became worrisome. Later on, my periods became heavier and longer with a lot of clotting. I even began to consider surgery as the doctor said that was the only way out. A friend shared the link to one of the healing services and Pastor Ayo was teaching on the woman with the issue of blood. 
At the same time, I was also dealing with a urinary tract infection. During the course of the meeting, Pastor Ayo gave a word about someone with an infection. I decided that I will not leave that service with any of the sicknesses in my body. Hallelujah. Brothers and sisters, make a decision today that you will not leave this miracle service with that issue. Hallelujah. Are we together? Hallelujah. To the glory of God. It has been months since I had abnormal bleeding. My period returned to normal with no pain and no clotting. Hallelujah. The urinary tract infection also disappeared completely like it never happened. I'm so grateful to God for healing me. Praise God. She says, emphasis, there is no barrier in the spirit. Whether you're here physically or connected virtually, God's miracle power will meet you at the point of your need today in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Brethren, lift your hands and thank God for these wonderful miracles in the house of Petra. Come on, give the Lord thanks. We will be seeing great and mighty miracles today also. Give the Lord thanks. Give him thanks. We thank you, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Oh, glory to God. Can we place a demand on the glory of God this morning? Can we ask for the glory of God to fill this room? Can we ask for the glory of God to fill this room? Be your heart cry this morning. Say, be glorified. glorified. Oh, be glorified. glorified. Oh, hallelujah. Be glorified. Can we lift our hands one more time? Say, be glorified. House this morning, Lord. Glorify. By the lifting of the hands and by the worship that we bring, oh Lord.
be glory. Can we say this prayer? For you to be lifted high. All we want is for you to be glory. For you to be lifted high. Hey, raise it up. Say, all we See the Lord lifted up above the words. Hey, all we want is for you to be glorified, for you to be lifted high. Oh, oh. the presence of the Lord. Lift up our hands, close our eyes and worship the Lord this morning. You are standing in the presence of the living God. The Bible says where two or more are gathered in his name, he is there. God is here in our midst. Please lift up your hands and close your eyes and let's worship. We'll take that song one more time and let's worship from our hearts this morning. We should come to the Lord with psalms, with hymns and spiritual songs. We should make melody in our hearts unto the God our Father. Lift up your hands wherever you are this morning. If you have a psalm, lift it up. If you have a hymn, lift it up. If you want to sing in the Spirit, lift up your voice this morning and begin to worship the Lord. The presence of God is in this place. Worship your name, Jesus. with his blood that we may become accepted in the beloved father we thank you we thank you for there's no greater love than this than for a man to lay down his life for his friends Jesus we thank you thank you for the miracle oh God of the new birth thank you for salvation oh God we were once lost, we were once dead. We once belonged to the elements of this world. But now because of the blood of Jesus, we are redeemed, hallelujah. 
Now we are the sons of God. Father, we give you all the praise. Oh, shatalabo, shatalabo, shatalabo. You have made me a clean, a clean seed. You have made the unrighteous righteous by the blood of Jesus. We give you all the praise, Father. We say thank you for your blood. We give you all the praise. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Put those hands together for Jesus. Come on, you can make it bigger. You can make it louder. You can make it bigger. You can add a scream, a shout. Hallelujah. Now I want to ask you a question this morning. Sincerely, isn't God good? Take a response from your neighbor. Look at your neighbor and ask your neighbor, isn't God good? If your neighbor is not responding well, he's a, he or she is a suspect. Praise God. Take Look at another neighbor and ask that neighbor, isn't God good? Hallelujah. Welcome to church. Please have your seats in God's house. Praise God. I am excited to be alive and well. Are you excited? Amen. And I'm excited to be in the city of Lagos. Hallelujah. Amen. Today is our um, Easter miracle service. And one of the things I want you to know is that everyone who is trusting God for something in their lives, a miracle, a healing will live with their word, with their manifestation today. Who believes that? How many of you believe that? I believe it. Someone say, I believe. I believe it. I want us to quickly turn our Bibles. I'm going to be exhorting us briefly this morning before God's servant, Pastor Ayo, comes and takes the service this morning. I want to exhort us this morning from the book of Isaiah, chapter 53 and verse 3. There's no perfect time. There's no better time for us, you know, to receive the blessings, the goodness, the miracles of God than this season. It was in this season that Jesus Christ paid the ultimate price for our lives and for our salvation. And one of the crucial things that he did on that cross was that when he died, he took away not just our sins, but he took away every single sickness. How many of us believe the word of God? I hope you know that the word of God is not just, you know, a sweet book to read or fables or something, you know, you just used to get by or something you put under your Bible, under your pillow, praise God, when you want to sleep and say, plus Jesus minus Satan, amen. The word of God is living, it is active, praise God. And we're going to be seeing what really happened, you know, in that season where Jesus was crucified, he was buried, and then his resurrection from the book of Isaiah and his resurrection and his ascension. Let's look at Isaiah chapter 53 and verse, we can start from verse 3. He says, he is despised and rejected of all men. So this is the prophecy of Isaiah concerning Jesus, what happened at his death, burial, and resurrection. A picture of what happened. He says, he, was this, he is despised and rejected of men. A man of sorrow acquainted with griefs. And we hid as it were our faces from him. He was despised and we esteemed him not. Verse 4 is where I'm going to. If you have the Bibles, please look into it and we can read together. Let's go. One, two, go. Surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. Please hold on. He says, borne our griefs. Was your griefs included in that? When you see that word, our, are you inside there? He says, he took our griefs. He carried our sorrows. He says, yet we esteemed him sick, stricken, smitten of God and afflicted. Verse 5 says, let's take verse 5 together. One to go. He was wounded for our transgressions. Let's continue. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. With his stripes, we are healed. Someone, let's take the last phrase together. With his, we are, by his stripes, we are, with his stripes, we are. So, are you going to be healed or are you already healed? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So this morning, as God's servant comes to bring us the word, you're just going to come and take what is yours. Hallelujah. Praise God. Has he paid for your transgressions? Has he taken away your iniquities? Your peace, the Bible says the chastisement of your peace was upon him. Has he paid for your peace? 
And you know, I love that word peace. You know, in English, we mean peace to mean, you know, absence of chaos and when everything is just, you know, peaceful and you are relaxing. But peace is so much more than that. Peace means a full life. Everything that you need. Hallelujah. In peace is your family. In peace is your prosperity. Hallelujah. In peace is your healing and health. And look at what happened. The Bible says the chastisement of your peace has been put upon him. Amen. Amen. So you don't have to have any area of your life that makes you sad. You see, the word of God is true. And not only is it true, it is living. Not only is it living, it is active. Hallelujah. And that means it causes change. How many of us are ready to receive God's word that will change our lives forever? Amen. Amen. How many of us? So it looks like a few of us. Amen. Some people just came to church to look at the pretty pastor's face. Amen. Some just came to scope around. Amen. But some of us came to receive of the Lord this morning. Hallelujah. Praise God. So God's healing mercy is in this house this morning. And I want to encourage everyone. The most important thing you need to do is to pay attention. Look at your neighbor and say, pay attention. You can't come to church and be distracted. You can't come to church and be looking left, right. You came to meet with God. So I want to encourage you this morning, as much as it is possible, when we shout, shout with us. There are some things you will not understand. Praise God. But trust us, we are carrying you to where we know. Amen? Amen. We are not taking you to where you don't know. Hallelujah. So when we shout, shout with us. When we say in Jesus' name, with all your heart, believe it, receive it, and it shall be yours. The most important thing you need this morning is to pay attention with an expectant heart. Pay attention with an expectant heart. Drop your phones. Hallelujah. Praise God. Just a few more minutes, you'll be out of here. You can do all the things you want to do on your phone. But please just drop your phone. Pay attention. Listen intently. All right? Don't be distracted by anything. Hallelujah. Ensure that this morning, I'm here to receive of the Lord my healing. Hallelujah. My peace. Amen. I'm here to receive my righteousness, my salvation, every single thing that God has for you, you will receive this morning. How many of us believe that this morning? Now, I'm going to ask us to do one simple thing. What is that one thing you're trusting God for? I want you to think deeply. What is that one thing that you want to leave the service with today? Is it a healing in your body? Is it peace in your heart? Is it peace in your family or your home? There's trouble in your marriage, or there's something wrong with your children, or your ministry is just not, you know, looking up. What is that one thing you are trusting God for? Do we have that thing? I want you to think about it consciously right now. And please rise up because we're going to lift it up into, um, in prayer this morning unto God. Just one thing. If your list is plenty, I permit you to add two. Hallelujah. I know for some of us it's house, car, husband, children, wife, amen, glory. Everything is summed up in peace. Now, I want you to sincerely, from the depths of your heart, lift up that prayer and say, Father, in the name of Jesus, in this morning service, I receive an answer to this. I receive an answer to this. For some of us, our children have gone wayward. Our children are not going the path that we want. And you want to pray to God and ask God to arrest them. Lift that child up to the Lord now. I want you to lift something up to the Lord. Lift it up unto the Lord and begin to ask, Father, in the name of Jesus, into this service, into this service, this is done. This is sorted. My healing comes to me now in the name of Jesus. You are believing God for a contract. Your business has been so dry this year. You are trusting God for an infusion of funds and customers. Lift it up unto the Lord this morning. It's Easter and it's a miracle service. This morning, you are going to receive a miracle in the name of Jesus. Come on now, lift up your voice and begin to pray. Say, Father, in the name of Jesus, as I lift up this matter to you, I call it done today by your word and your anointing in this service. In the name of Jesus, lift up your voice and begin to pray. I can't hear you praying. I need you to lift up your voice. This issue in my back, this issue in my waist, this issue in my womb, this issue in my in the lumps that I have in this breast. I call it gone today. I receive a miracle into this service in the name of Jesus. Some of you are believing for helpers, the helpers that God has sent to you. 
by the anointing of God in today's service. In the name of Jesus, they are locating you and you are locating them. Open your mouth and begin to pray. The Bible says the earnest fervent prayer. Come on, make your prayers earnest. Make your prayers fervent. The earnest fervent prayer of the righteous man is what produces results. Pray from your heart. We don't serve a God who is deaf. We don't serve a God who is blind. We don't serve a God who cannot answer. He is the one who hears and answers. But you must speak to him. And when you speak to him and you ask by faith, he will answer. What is that one thing you are believing God for? Lift it up to the Lord in prayer this morning. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you. You have heard the voice and the cry of your people. You have heard the voice and the cry of your children. As they have so desired, oh God, let it be done unto them in the name of Jesus. As they have so desired, as they have expressed, oh, that thing they are trusting you for, oh God. Let it be done for them today in the name of Jesus. We give you all the praise and the glory in Jesus' name. Put your hands together for Jesus. Come on, put your hands together for Jesus. If you have believed, you are living in a testimony this morning, put those hands together for Jesus. Hallelujah. God bless you. Please have your seats. Enjoy the rest of the service and remember to pay attention. Someone say pay attention. God bless you. No name so sweet. There is no name so sweet like Jesus' name. Like Jesus' name, the Son of God. The Son of God who died on the cross. There is no name so sweet. There is no name so sweet. Oh, like Jesus' name. Like Jesus' name. The Son of God. The Son of God. Who died. No name, no name so sweet. Hey, I Jesus name. I rope it in the giving. Oh, the song of God who died and rose and is alive forever. Come on now. Hey, oh, oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. 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 Oh, hallelujah. Hey, can you raise your hand and say, Hallelujah? Oh, oh, oh. hey, to wait and say hallelujah one more time everybody hallelujah to the Lord strong and mighty 
the mighty God is His name. Hallelujah. Oh, Blessed be your holy name, Jesus. Blessed be your holy name, Jesus. Thank you for the gift of Easter. Thank you for the gift of Jesus at Easter. Lord, we bless you. Lord, we thank you. Lord, we give you praise. Lord, we thank you. Close your eyes and just worship him and thank him for the gift of Jesus. Bless him, worship him. There's none to be compared to him. There's none like the Lord Jesus. There's none to be compared to him. Jesus, we thank you. Jesus, we bless you. We give you praise. We give you the glory. 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 Blessed be your name. Thank you for paying the price. Thank you for shedding your blood. Thank you. Thank you for paying our debts. Thank you. Thank you. There's none to be compared to you. Give him praise for the salvation of your soul. Give him praise for the cross. Thank him for his blood. Worship him and adore him. Give him praise and thank him. Glory to his holy name. Jesus, we bless you. Jesus, we thank you. For the next one minute, go ahead and bless him. For the next one minute, go ahead and bless him. Thank you for your blood shed in our behalf. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for the gift of the cross. Thank you, precious Lord. Our Lord is alive. He lives forevermore. That's our hope. That's our confidence. That this Jesus, who was crucified on the cross, nailed to the cross, bled from his side, from his hands. The crown of thorns bled. That same Jesus is alive today. That same Jesus is alive today. That same Jesus is alive today. Ora me ne feila a cross da paranonte pero du scala aradijo ste baranieta that same jesus is alive today that same jesus is alive today that same jesus is alive today that same jesus he emptied himself of the glory that he had with the father to come the form and the nature of man in that while we were yet seen as christ died for us Oh, what a love, oh, what a love. What manner of love the Father has bestowed upon us. What a love, 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 what a love. For the seed of Abraham was flesh and bones. He took on flesh and bones and died the death of shame, the death of the cross, just for his love wherewith he's loved us. Died the death of shame, died the death of the cross became a curse for us, became sin for us. Oh, Barato, Baradiga, Shatanamandi, despised of all men, despised of all men. His visage was so mad. Oh, despised of all men, his visage was so mad, we could not recognize him. He took on the pain, he took on the stripes, he took it on all upon himself. For me, for me, for me. He didn't have to do it, but he did it. 
He didn't have to do it, but he did it. He didn't have to die, but he died. He didn't have to shed his blood, but he shed it. He didn't have to do it, but he did it. He didn't have to shed his blood, but he shed it. Oh, thank you, Lord. Kiramanto salia tananga shadabante berotisa kabaya. Is someone grateful for the gift of Jesus? Is there anyone in the auditorium this morning grateful for the gift of Jesus? Is there anyone in the auditorium who could have died for themselves? If you could die for yourself, shed your blood for yourself, then you have no reason to give thanks. But if you know that the Son of God didn't have to die, the Son of God didn't have to pay the price, but He paid the price. If you know that He died for you, Oh, come on, worship him this morning. Give him praise. Our Lord is risen. Our Lord is not in the grave. 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 Our Lord is risen. My God, my Lord is risen. My Lord is risen. He's not in the grave. He's not in the grave. He's not in the grave. His reason, death could not hold him bound. Sickness could not hold him bound. Sin could not hold him bound. Infirmities could not hold him bound. My Lord is reason. My Lord is reason. My Lord is reason. My God is reason. My Lord is reason. Alive forevermore. Alive forevermore. Alive forevermore. Alive forevermore. Alive forevermore. Death could not hold you bound. Sin could not hold you bound. He's alive forevermore. Oh, alive, alive, my Savior is alive. Alive forevermore. The sting of death is gone, and I believe I have eternal life, because Jesus is alive. Sing hallelujah, sing hallelujah. My Savior is alive forevermore. Sing hallelujah. Sing hallelujah. My Savior is alive. Thank you, Lord. Jesus, we give you praise. You didn't have to die, but you died for us. Thank you for the perfect gift of Jesus on the cross. Thank you for the blood of eternal redemption. Thank you. We bless you. We give you praise. Glory to your holy name. Hallelujah. 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 Glory, glory, glory. Hallelujah. The easiest thing for the Lord to do is to heal your body. Okay? That's the easiest simplest thing under heaven for the Lord to do, to heal your body. It's not a big deal. And um, everyone who came here today with any infirmity in, your, in their bodies, you will return home with your miracles. Okay. So there's someone with a lower back condition, um, just, just a lower back condition here. And um, 
it's been there for a long time on and off and it's almost as though let me use the word that I'm hearing in my heart your back hooks you know that feel when they say it just hooks and it's just difficult for you to exercise yourself I mean turn over and bend over the Lord just healed you now in the name of Jesus Christ okay anybody like that you got a back condition you, you've got it's it's just been there for a while just okay ma I can see that hand thank you Lord okay church let's let's just lift our hands and bless the Lord thank you Lord ma I want you to bend over and do what you couldn't do before everybody else just worshiping the Lord just bend over and do what you couldn't do before thank you Lord thank you Lord thank you Lord glory to God hallelujah hallelujah yep 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 glory to God glory to God glory to God glory to God hallelujah just a quick question my how do you feel can, can, I, can I get over how do you feel you feel better what was it before could you please tell me what 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 it was it's okay she can't she can't stand there it's okay what what, what was it in fact it was even worse yesterday I, I really found it so difficult to get up from my bed up till this morning i even did the exercises i knew to do but when i came i just trusted god that i would go back with my testimony so can place. I ask, Ma, do you still feel the pain? It's, it's gone. It's gone. It's gone. It's, it's gone. It's gone. <laughs> Ma, can I tell you something? I love the way you're receiving the miracle with style and panache and poise. I mean, she's bending it with panache, with poise. Can you imagine? She said she couldn't stand up this morning. Your mom, amazing. I didn't know. Congratulations, Ma. Wow. So are you aware of that? Amazing. Amazing. Thank you, Lord Jesus. We serve a healing Jesus. Lift those hands and bless him and worship him. Give him praise. Give him praise. Give him praise and worship him. Give him praise and thank him. Bless him. Bless him. Bless him. Bless him. There's none to be compared to this Jesus. We give you praise and we thank you. Blessed be your holy name. Blessed be your holy name. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. To you and you alone be the glory, the honor and the praise. Glory to your holy name. Hallelujah. There's such a strong presence of God's Spirit here. I don't know if you know it. Um, I know that anointing of the Holy Spirit when it's present. And you know the beautiful thing is this, is that the Lord is the healer. Um, and um, he's never, he's constant. The same yesterday, today, and forever. What he is to one, he will be to another. What he is to one, he will be to another. Just stretch out in faith and receive that which the Lord has for you today. Whatever you came believing God for, you are returning with a testimony in the name of Jesus. I was still saying, I don't know if you remember that service. I'm sure Emma would remember. We had a service like this. And towards the end, I began to sing about the help of God. And I just walked into the um, congregation. How would I have ever known this was... We say church, it was a combined service, so it was a mass, it was a crowd. And so I just walked to the fellow and I kept pointing at him. I'm not sure whether I was pointing or I held his hand, I'm not even sure what it is, and all the rest. I didn't know the Lord was speaking to him. I thought I was just singing. And then he said, At that instant, the Lord told him that it's this is for your sister in the United Kingdom. This was a Sunday. This was a Sunday. I can't forget this testimony. It was a Sunday. And um, so he called the sister after. And he said, 
this is what happened. Pastor was singing, <laughs> your help has come. And said, oh, I believe my help has come. In just a few minutes, on a Sunday, she got a job. She was called by the recruiters. And guess what they said? Can you resume today? On a Sunday, in the United Kingdom. <laughs> on a Sunday, we had a meeting like this. And the Lord began to speak to me about eye conditions. How would I have ever known that there was a lady in Thailand, a lady all the way in Thailand, blind in one eye, who was going to go for a surgery in the United Kingdom six months' time, between three to six months' time. She was a Ghanaian, interestingly. I mean, this was an intercontinental miracle. She was in Thailand, a Ghanaian, and was going to the United Kingdom for a surgery. She said right there, just connected online. I think it was, I'm not sure whether the left or the right eye, it was, it was an eye. All right, one of them popped open. Guess what? Guess what? She sent me a mail a couple of months after. She said, I kept checking. <laughs> you know how people are not too sure if they've received the miracle or not. She said, I kept checking. I kept checking and my eye is still good. Hallelujah. Today you're returning with your testimony. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Turn to the person beside you and tell them he's alive forevermore. Say this, we serve a living Jesus. Come and say it again. We serve a living Jesus. He's alive forevermore. How many of you believe that? He's alive. Glory to God. And if he's alive, he will do what he did when he was alive. If he raised the dead when he was alive, he will raise the dead now again that he's alive. If he healed the sick when he was alive, he will heal the sick now again that he's alive. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I want you to put those hands together for the Lord. And you may have your seats. I just want to share one, two, three things with you this morning. Um, it's not the regular. Let's appreciate them. Awesome. Well done. God bless you. <laughs> Praise God. Luke chapter 24. From there. I will just touch on a couple of things here and there, a couple of things that I believe the Lord would have me um, just mention, and then would minister by the Spirit to the needs of the people. Okay? Um, Paul spoke about that in Galatians, the third chapter. He says, He that uh, ministereth the Spirit to you and worketh miracles amongst you, doeth ye it by the works of the law or by the hearing of faith. So when the Word of God is being taught, two things happen. Number one, there is the ministration of the Spirit. Say with me, the ministry of the Spirit. It says, He that ministereth the Spirit to you. So the spirit can be ministered. And um, I dare say that the answer you need is the Holy Spirit. Okay, so um, the word of God is going forth like this and then suddenly light comes to you on that subject. Suddenly. You know, sometimes people actually would leave before they realize they have gotten a miracle. That's what happens. That's what happens. People, you're out there and then you go, Oh, wow, I got a miracle. <laughs> Something happened to me. Amazing. Amazing. And then the second thing that happens is that as the word of God is taught, miracles are being worked. Say with me, I believe in miracles. It's impossible for you to be a believer and not believe in miracles. It takes a miracle for you to be a believer. You remember what Job said? He said, who can bring a clean thing out of an unclean? How can you bring something clean? How can you bring righteousness out of sin? It takes a miracle. It takes a miracle. Romans, the third chapter, Paul said, um, God justifies the ungodly. How do you justify the ungodly? It takes a miracle to be born again. That's the biggest miracle. Are you following what I'm saying here? And um, if you believe that you're saved, then you can believe for anything else. You can believe for anything else, absolutely anything. I believe in miracles. I've seen miracles all my life. I feel like telling a few stories here and there. Glory to God. 
my daughter was nine months and we just suddenly realized something is wrong. I think it was about nine months, ten months, we realized something might not be right here. So we called a consultant pediatrician and said, sir, this and this is what we have noticed. He said, oh, don't worry, just let her be till she's 12 months, 13 months. Well, she was 12 months, she was 13 months, and she couldn't walk. And um, the doctors told us, you remember, it was actually almost a thing of, how can both of you be doctors and watch this happen to you? How can you be doctors? So they told us, they said, the only thing they didn't say was that we're irresponsible. Uh, what they did not know was that we had asked a doctor, and he said, you know, because I'm not a doctor. I only went to school for medicine. <laughs> you get what I'm saying? Um, I can't even treat headache anymore. I'm not even sure what drugs they use anymore and all the rest. So, I mean, how do you expect me to remember all of these things? So they said to us, her chances of working are slim, blah, blah, blah. You've heard me tell the story. Um, you're going to have to do this. You're going to have to do that. We did this. We did that. And for months, my daughter won't go to church because we didn't want anybody saying sorry to us. And um, she's very energetic. You could tell she wanted to walk. She would cry and scream. <laughs> but she had this cast on her leg, and there was absolutely nothing. You know, at that point, I understood the love of the Father for his children. I understood the compassion of Jesus. Because many a times, I would wish I was the one who couldn't work. I'd look at my daughter creeping, crawling on the floor, crying, begging as it were to stand up. And she couldn't stand up. And here was Pastor, Pastor Ayo's daughter. And we couldn't take her to Sunday school and all the rest. Somebody had to stay with her at home all the while because she couldn't work. And I remember, I don't know if you remember, I set a reminder on my phone, three-hourly reminder of the confession I was going to make concerning her. And so my phone would beep at certain times. Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the Lord. I decree and I declare your ligaments are normal, your muscles are normal, your bones and all the rest and all the rest. I wasn't in town. She had gone to see the doctor. It was going to be the last resort. They said, you're going to have to try a surgery or something. And I, I, you will remember. Women remember all these details. Men just like the victory. Do you get what I'm saying here? But I think they said the chances are 90, 10 or something like that. If they do the surgery, the chances of her working is about 10%, 90%. She won't be able to work, and that's the end. So this was the last visit where we knew our fate. They were going to take out the cast. She had these shoes she was wearing and all the rest. Funny stuff. Funny stuff. I had gone to preach at Akure. I can never forget. And... Um, she was at the hospital. She had taken her daughter to the hospital. You remember what you described? She said, as they cut, you know, because they have to use a saw. And I remember I checked. I saw what them doing it one time. I was so scared. I was a doctor, but I said, what if the saw gets to my daughter's leg? I'm going to break somebody's head here. <sighs> so they had this doctor's visit. Last, removing the cast, she said to me, as they removed the thing. I mean, these guys have told us this is the last. We're going to have to take her in for a surgery and all the rest. Her feet, those little things, touched the floor. She sprang up like a deer, almost as though I have been waiting for this moment all my life. I look at that girl jumping everywhere on my bed, and she's a reminder that Jesus is alive. Jesus Christ. here. You know, when, when I hear people talk about not believing in miracles, I've, I've received too many miracles from the Lord not to believe. He's alive. Did you hear what I said? He's alive. Do you remember when they said your son had Kawasaki, Kawasaki syndrome? <laughs> I said, Kawa what? He said, it would take six weeks to get the, the stand-up doctor. You are the practicing doctor. He said, it's an Asian thing, Right? That's what you guys say. <laughs> it's an Asian thing. It would take about six weeks to get the drug. I remember I looked at my wife. The doctor went out. I said, let's get out now. 
He had gone out to make, I said, once he comes back, he says he's rubbish, we're leaving this place. We left the hospital, I said, Kawa what? Every name will bow to the name of Jesus. <laughs> Are you getting what I'm saying here? Please sit down. Kawasaki will bow. Or you, want, you remember when the doctors told you, hey, she's got not enough fluid or something like that, and the baby may be born, looks as though, and all dressed. I said, my baby, God already gave him a name. God already gave him a name. Say this with me, I believe in miracles. Because Jesus is alive. Come and say it again, I believe in miracles. Because Jesus is alive. Pilate, Pontius Pilate asked Jesus a question. And I think that's the question the whole world is asking. But it's the wrong question. He asked Jesus a question and Jesus did not answer him. He said, what is truth? What is truth? Pontius Pilate asked Jesus. He said, what is truth? Jesus, he said to Jesus, I doubt the king of the Jews. Jesus said, did they tell you? Or are you the one saying it of yourself? And then he said to Pontius Pilate, he said, because Pontius Pilate had bragged to him, he said, you know, I can release you if I want to release you. I have the power. And Jesus said, nobody has the power to do this, save that it's given to him of God. He says, my kingdom is not of this world. My kingdom is out of this world. He said, I have servants. If I need them to do things, they will get it done. He says, but I'm here to bear witness to the truth. And then Pontius Pilate asked him, he said, what is truth? What is truth? And I think the world over is still looking for truth. They're asking what is truth, but truth is not a what. Truth is a who. Truth is Jesus Christ. Are you listening to what I'm saying here? This is the season of Easter, and I want you to come to an appreciation of what it really means for you to be a Christian. The loftiness, the beauty, the glory of having this Jesus in your heart. We have not followed cunningly devised fables. We have not, it's not a religion. It's not a nice thing to be a Christian. It's not a beautiful thing, in vogue thing to be a Christian. Far from it. It's far from it. We have received the truth. Jesus said, I am the way, not a way. He said, I am the way. Say that with me. He is the way. He said, I am the way, not the way. Many people say there are several ways to God. There are no several ways to God. He said, I am the way. I am the truth. I am not a truth. I am what? The truth. And then he says that I am what? The life. No man can come unto the Father but by me. Can I ask you a question? What is the world seeking? They are seeking for the way. They're looking for better ways. What is the world seeking for? They're looking for the truth. Somebody says, this is my truth. They're looking for the truth. What is the world seeking for? They're looking for life. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and what? The life. We have received the most precious gift in the whole universe. Far more precious than anything the world can give to us. Are you listening to what I'm saying here? We have all, all people, of all people, the most favored. Of all people. I want to show you something. Luke chapter 24. Can I, can I, have, um, can I have this here? Luke chapter 24 from verse 1. I want you to see something there. Luke chapter 24 from verse 1. Say this to me. Jesus is alive. Thank you. Luke 24, thank you, thank you, thank you. Great, 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 great. Because the most important event in all of history is the death of Jesus Christ, not even the birth. The birth is powerful. The Genesis 1 creation is powerful. But the most important event in all of history, the great celebration of Christianity is the celebration of of his resurrection. A Jesus who came, who was born and refused to die, is <laughs> of no use to you and I. He would have just been a great, long-living teacher and prophet. Are you following what I'm saying? 
So thank God for Christmas. I love Christmas. That's when we share the chicken and all the rest. And everybody goes on break and all the rest. But the greatest event in all of Christianity, and I dare say all of mankind's experience, is the resurrection of Jesus Christ. That's the greatest event. This is what separates Christianity from every other religion. All other religions, their proponents and the protagonists of those religions were all born. They were all born. You might argue Jesus was a virgin conception, but they were all born of a woman. All of them were born. It's only Christianity that claims that the man who brought it rose from the dead. It's only Christianity. And historically, it's proven that he rose from the dead. Biblically, it's proven that he rose from the dead. This is the crux of our Christian faith. Look at this here. Luke 24 from verse 1. He says, Now upon the first day of the week, very early in the morning, they came to the sepulcher, bringing the spices which they had prepared and setting others with them. Next verse, verse 2 there. And they found the stone rolled away from the sepulcher. The angels had rolled away the stone. Okay. Look at what it says. And they entered in and found not the body of the Lord Jesus. It says they entered into the tomb and they found not the body. They were looking, hoping to find Jesus there. Let's put some extra spices and all the rest. Look at what happens next. Verse 4. Hey, say this with me. Thank God he wasn't there. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> That's really weak. That's really weak. Thank God he was not there. I'm telling you. Look at what he says. He says, and it came to pass, as they were much perplexed thereabout, behold, two men stood by them in shining garments. Next verse. Everybody read, want to go. And as they were afraid and bowed their faces to the earth, they said unto them, why seek ye the living among the dead? Come on, let's read that again. As they were afraid and bowed down their faces, they said unto them, Why seek ye the living amongst the dead? The absolute witness, the final witness, unshakable witness to the deity of Jesus was his resurrection. Not the miracles he performed. Every miracle Jesus performed, I hope you know, they were already performed in the Old Testament, pretty much, including the raising of the dead. Pretty much. Every one of them had been performed in one form or the other. In fact, in the Old Testament, the raising of the dead was actually a bit more spectacular. It was bones <laughs> that raised the dead. The bones of a dead prophet raised the dead. Are you getting what I'm saying here? So the performing of the miracles, as beautiful as it was, he multiplied um, bread and fish and all dress. Moses brought manna from heaven. He walked on water. Moses parted water. Are you getting what I'm saying here? So the miracles don't, they, they were not the proof of his deity. Are you getting what I'm saying here? If he had died, and the only stories we have about him is that he performed those miracles, then pretty much he was just a super prophet. He was just a super prophet. But we don't have a super prophet. There's a difference. There's a difference. The final and absolute proof to the deity of Jesus is his resurrection from the dead. It is the proof that cannot be reproduced by anyone else. Are you following what I'm saying? Yes, cannot be reproduced by anyone else. Is it preaching? They can preach. Is it organization? They can organize religions. Is it performing miracles? They can. Or you think it's only believers that perform miracles? You're deceived. Unbelievers perform miracles. Juju priests perform miracles. <laughs> I know there's a generation that thinks, you know, demons are just a figment of people's imagination. Nah, demons? Nah. It's our grand, great. Okay, so let's assume that your great grandparents had demons that they were, um, um, uh, they had to deal with. Where did those demons go now? <laughs> They've gone to another country or something. It's just the assignment that has changed. I'm telling you. It's just the assignment that has changed. So you have people who think that, you know, there's, I, mean, I mean, everything that you see is what you see and all the rest. But that's not true. Even evil workers perform miracles. They do. They do. <laughs> and my father was not always born again. 
He was initially a Muslim before he got born again. Now, if you know anything about um, your stepbrothers and all the rest, if you know anything about them and what they believe, then you know that it's not far from occultism and juju. They are open to it. And so my father took me. You know, I always say this, that I'm a high priest who is moved by the feelings of all your infirmities. Uh, my mother took me to white garments. My father enrolled me in a Catholic school. My dad was a Muslim. My mother was a Baptist. I used to, I was the thief to complete the circle because I stole all her money and his money. Um, and my father took me to juju priests. Yes. I used to be very sickly. I, I can never forget. Somebody says, you really went? Yes, a shrine, a shrine, a real shrine. Yeah, he took me there. And my father had this fortification. You know, they called it, um, I, I, some of you are too, too sh to say some of these things. Uh, whatever it is, it's, just stay with it. <laughs> but then if you check my father's suit, he always had these things he kept in his suit. They were fortification. And um, I remember telling my dad about a bully one time, and he told me, you're going to put this in your pocket. Yeah. <laughs> we don't talk much about this. Um, and all. So, you know, when I, when I look at believers thinking that all that they see is all that meets the eye, I, I feel sorry for them. I feel very sorry for them. The evil world can mimic power. Are you getting what I'm saying here? They can mimic it. The only thing that Satan cannot do is to produce life. That's the only thing he cannot do, to produce life. So he said, why seek he the living amongst the dead? He has the victory over death. This is what proves that he's the savior, he's the Messiah. His victory over death. This is how we know that we have believed right. Are you following what I'm saying here? This is important. This is how we know we have believed right. This is the anchor of our faith. Do you remember what Paul said in 1 Corinthians, the 15th chapter? He says that if Jesus be not risen from the dead, he said we are of all men most miserable if he be not risen from the dead. Hallelujah. So we have to understand what the resurrection is about. It is about the life of God gaining absolute victory and mastery over death. The life of God Gaining victory and absolute mastery over death. We're not talking here just about a sickness. We're not talking here just about a pain. We're not talking here just about a need in your life. All of those things are included in the word death. In Genesis, the second chapter, the 17th verse, he said, the day that you eat of this fruit, you shall surely what? Die. How many of you agree that Adam didn't die immediately physically? Am I right? So that tells you something. The death he was talking about there could not have been a physical death. Because if he had eaten the fruit and he fell down dead immediately, he would have said, oh, God's word was fulfilled. But he didn't fall down dead immediately. That tells you that death is actually far more than just a physical thing. When Jesus came into the world, please stay here. You've got to understand this. His combat was not with a sickness. Please listen very carefully to this. His um, victory was not over just a sickness, just over an infirmity, over lack, over a demon and all the rest. No. The victory of Jesus was a victory over death. Look at this. What was the fall? The day you eat of it, you shall surely die. Am I right? Not you shall surely fall sick. The day you eat of it, you shall surely die. In essence, the moment you turn away from this, you shall surely die. What was the big issue? It was death. Are you following what I'm saying here? Now, everything that we call problems and needs are all products and fruits of death. Sickness is a fruit of death. Poverty is a fruit of death. Want is a fruit of death. Are you getting what I'm saying here? In essence, when anybody is sick, the root of it is what we call death. Now, what is this death? In our minds, we always think that death is, you know, somebody put in a coffin and all dressed. That's a type of death, but that's not the only type of death there is. There are three types of death shown us in Scripture. That's why in Isaiah 53, when he says that he made his grave, uh, the word grave there is plural. He, he made his death amongst the rich. Isaiah said he made his grave amongst the rich. The word grave there is death. 
and it's plural. He says he made his debts. So it wasn't one debt. Are you following what I'm saying? Look at what it says. All right. And he made his grave with the wicked, with the rich in his what? Debt. Because he had done no violence, neither was any deceit found in his mouth. Now, if you study that word grave there, it's the word debt. And it's used in plural form to show you that it's not one debt. It's not one debt he, uh, he died. Debt is not just a cessation of physical existence. No. No. In the day that you eat of the fruit, you shall surely die. What did it mean? And when Jesus came and gave us victory over debt, what does it mean? The first kind of debt, and I want you to write the three types of debt shown us in Scripture. You have what we call spiritual debt. You have what we call physical debt. And you have what we call um, the second debt. Spiritual debt, physical debt, and the second debt. Now, spiritual debt is, let's, let's give a generic definition for that. That is not a cessation of existence. That is a disconnection from source. Are you following what I'm saying here? Debt is not a cessation of existence. Debt is a disconnection from source, which means um, you say the speaker is dead. Why is he dead? Because he's disconnected from the amplifier. It's disconnected from the power source. You say the AC is dead. Why is he dead? Because he's disconnected. The source of life, uh, whatever you need to do to get power into it and to power it on um, is not happening. So you say he's what? Dead. Uh, when you say the, the car is dead, what are you saying? There's no battery power to turn it on and ignite it and get it to work. Are you following what I'm saying here? In essence, death is not a cessation of existence. It's a disconnection from source. The moment you redefine death, then you understand what he meant when he says, in the day that you eat of the fruit, you shall surely die. Because what God was saying is this, that you will be disconnected from the life that you now have. So what happened to Adam in that garden, and this would be by way of, um, you know, exhortation for some of you who have been in the body of Christ for a bit, and it will be by way of teaching for some of you who may be hearing it for the first time, but either way, it will be a blessing to you. Are you following what I'm saying here? Now, when Adam ate of the fruit in the garden, what happened was not that he just became a sinner or God was angry with him. No, he became one in union, in nature, in character with the devil. Are you following what I'm saying here? In essence, he was disconnected from God, the source of his life. And now he became one in character and nature with the devil. So the issue, please listen, the issue was not a sin issue in terms of act. The issue was that man had become a partaker of the very nature of Satan. And what's the nature of Satan? Death. Is somebody follow what I'm saying here? So when he says that in the day that you shall surely eat of it, you shall die, man became one with the enemy. Man became one with Satan in nature, in essence. You know, that's why um, um, he was Paul speaking to the Corinthian church. He says that what relationship does light have with darkness? Believers with unbelievers. He started by saying believers with unbelievers. That's easy for us to take, am I right? And then he says, what relationship does light have with what? Darkness. Now, do you agree that the believer is light? Come on, talk to me. Do you agree that the believer is light? Now, who is the unbeliever? Darkness. That's what he called them. He didn't just say they are walking in darkness. He says they are darkness. Why? Because the moment you say yes to Jesus, you become one with the light. He that is joined to the Lord is one spirit. And in the same way, we are joined to the enemy by birth. Is somebody following what I'm saying? Here? So Jesus did not come. Observe that when he told us why he came, he didn't come just in a bid to forgive us our sins. Because you can be a forgiven sinner. Oh, you didn't hear what I said. It's like embalming the dead. The dead can smell nice. They are wearing all the nice spices and, all, and that's what they wanted to do. You have to understand why the Lord, that, that part was included there. In essence, they said, this is the body of Christ. Let us embalm the dead. It's dead, but he's smelling nice. Is somebody getting what I'm saying here? 
And then the angel said, why seek ye the living amongst the dead? The issue is not an embowment. The issue is a life. Somebody follow what I'm saying here? So you have religions tell you about morality. That's embowment. They tell you about good living in court. That's embowment. Because you can live good and not be right in the sight of God. Oh, Romans the fifth chapter. I want to show you something here. Romans the fifth chapter. You've got to get this. You've got to get this. You've got to get this. Say this. I'm alive. Glory to God. My God. Now, that word is going to have a different meaning to you today. Are you following what I'm saying? Because when you say I'm alive, you're saying I'm one with God. His life flows through my veins. Are you hearing what I'm saying here? Look at Romans the fifth chapter. I want you to see something there. I read this, I believe as a GS1 student or something like that, and I, I can remember exactly where I was when this word was fired into my heart. Look at Romans 5 verse, 5, verse 7. Let's, let's go to verse 6. Verse 6. I can never forget it. I was a student, secondary school student, and then the Lord began to speak to me from here. Look at what he says. He says, for when we were yet without strength, in due time, Christ did what? Died for who? The ungodly. When we were without strength, without life, Christ died for the ungodly. Verse 7 with a loud voice. One to go. For scarcely for a righteous man will one die. In essence, there is no need to die for a righteous man. That's what he's saying. But observe what he says next. He says, yet peradventure for a good man. Do you see the distinction he makes between a righteous man? The word good there is a moral man. Which means you can be morally upright, but that's not what brings life. Righteousness will bring moral uprightness. But I can be morally upright without righteousness. Is somebody getting what I'm saying here? In essence, the work of Jesus, please, it's important you get this. He says, I have come, not that they may have a car, not that they may get married and have children. Is somebody getting what I'm saying here? Not that their bodies may be healed. Can I ask you a question? Will our bodies be healed? Oh, sure. Come on now. Come on now. Would we have the cars? Oh, sure, we will have. Would we have the houses? Oh, sure. Would we live a good life? Oh, sure, we will. But here's the problem. Stop chasing the fruits one by one. Get the roots that grows all the fruits. Is somebody get what I'm saying here? And so he says, I have come that they might have life. That's why he came. It's not just a forgiveness. He says, why seek ye the living amongst the dead? Stop trying to embalm dead things. Christianity is not an improvement on your character. Oh, God. Is somebody listen to what I'm saying here? It is not God trying to improve your character. No. And I know many people, uh, um, the church over still get hung up on this because it's difficult for them to accept and understand the things we're saying. It's not, any, it's not homeowner's improvement. No. It's not you embalming a dead person. No. It is you giving life to a dead person. There's a difference. Glory to God. And so Jesus came and his primary assignment, please listen to me, was to demonstrate absolute mastery over death. The first there being what? Spiritual death. Let me give you some definitions. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Mm -mm -mm. What is spiritual death? It is a state of being alienated. A state of being alienated and separated from God. You are alienated and separated from God and in union with the devil. Which means when a man hasn't received Jesus into his heart, he may be the greatest pop musician, but he's not to be envied by you. Why seek he the living among the dead? Among the dead. No matter the embalmment of a dead man, he's dead. Those embalmments can be in Rolls Royce. <laughs> you get what I'm saying? Yes, can be in 10 Grammys and all the rest. But why seek ye the living? It's, it's an unfortunate thing that believers sometimes think that we, we've been dealt with the, the shortest hand of God. It's an unfortunate thing. Do you know what it means when he says Jesus rose from the dead and he credited that life to your account? Say that, my life. That's what you're going to say all through this week, I'm alive. Are you following what I'm saying you're going to understand what we mean when I say I'm alive in just a bit. I'm alive. No sickness, no infirmity can stay in my body. You know why? I'm alive. 
I'm alive. This life flushes out death. The light shineth in the darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. Are you following what I'm saying here? This life flushes out every manifestation of death. Is somebody hearing what I'm saying here? Say it again, I'm alive. Now stay with me. You know why I'm teaching you this? Revelation from the word is more potent than an anointing on a ministry gift. Oh, now the truth of the matter is, as preachers of the gospel, um, <laughs> we want people to be, and I say we because I'm a preacher, doesn't mean that's what I believe. But we want people to be dependent on us. We like it when somebody says, uh, you know, he prayed for me, and as he prayed, I began to shake, I began to shake, I began to shake, I began to shake. And as beautiful as that is, I think the greater testimony is that he taught me. I think that's the greater testimony. Because I can then reproduce what he taught me even when he's not there. That's the greater testimony. And I think for, for the most part, we, we, we've celebrated the anointing on ministry gifts and all dress, And that's beautiful. You see, um, a preacher comes in here and then says a prayer. Everybody goes under the power and things are happening. Everybody goes, wow, great man of God and all the rest. And that's, there's absolutely nothing wrong with that. But when the disciples said to Jesus, how come you were able to speak to the fig tree and the fig tree dried up from its roots? What did Jesus say? Oh, you, you don't know. This is a special class of divinity. There's a level you have to get to. Stop asking those questions. That's too... Why? Wh 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 How many years have you done with me? One year, six months? You want to be drying trees? <laughs> That's not what Jesus did. What did he do? He took Peter by the hand. He said, Peter, whosoever, whosoever. Are you hearing what I'm saying here? In a sense, this is not about me. This is everybody, anybody. Is somebody getting what I'm saying here? Now, why am I sharing this with you? Because the light from the word is more potent and more reliable than anointing on a ministry gift. Let nobody deceive you. Can I tell you something? Please sit down. We are more anointed on some days, less anointed on some days. Sometimes by what we do and by sometimes by what we are subjected to. Uh, you get what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> by what we're subjected to. You remember the prophet? They said, let's get a prophet. And then um, Jehoshaphat and the other kings were there. And I think it was, yeah, but whatever it is, they were there. And um, um, they got to the prophet. Now, the prophet was too angry to flow in the anointing. You know, that's the only time the prophet ever asked that get me a minstrel. And we have made a doctrine out of one act. There's nowhere in scriptures where anybody asks for a minstrel again. Then we, I, I see people saying it. Minstrel, get on the keyboard for me. Oh, blah, 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 blah. I, I understand all of those things, but hear this, hear this, hear this. There's a work you have with God. Whether or not there's no minstrel, you create your atmosphere yourself. Are <laughs> you getting what I'm saying here? I mean, do I know if the minstrel prayed? Do I know what the minstrel did before they came? I better carry my atmosphere. And you know how the Lord taught me this, Emmanuel? The Lord said to me, sit down, young man. The Lord said to me, this was years ago, I'll never forget it. He said, you're a city hid on a hill. He said, every city has a climate. He said, so when you enter into a place, enter as a city. I am not subject to the climate of the environment. I take my climate there. Is somebody listen to what I'm saying here? Now, remember, don't forget, I, I know what I was saying. <laughs> the Bible says they sat down there waiting for the prophet to prophesy. He said, if not, if not... I, you should go read the story. If not for this king, Jehoshaphat, that I'm looking at, I would have walked all of you out, terrible kings, evil people. He was too angry for the anointing to flow. Look at it. He says, as a lot of us live before whom I stand, surely, were it not that I regard the presence of Jehoshaphat? You know, sometimes we read this and we read it very quietly. Was it not that I regard the presence of Jehoshaphat? Hallelujah. You really think that's what he was saying? No, I'm sure he was, he was screaming. He was furious. Like, what, what nonsense. I've sent word to you several times. Unrepentant evil king. Terrible man. Now you are coming because you have a need of me. Get up. Jehoshaphat, I'm sorry. He was so angry. The Bible says, that I would not look toward thee, nor see thee. Next verse. Give me the next verse. But now, bring me a minstrel. In a sense, he needed somebody to help him stir up the anointing, to calm down. So as the minstrel was playing, hmm. Hmm. 
Hmm, finally, you got a bit. Yes, I'm getting, I'm getting. Keep playing, keep playing, keep playing. Ah, yes, so Monday. Now, the valley shall. <laughs> are you getting what I'm saying? Here? In essence, sometimes we are more anointed, less anointed. Sometimes the waters are stead. Sometimes the waters are not stead. But the word of God is always stead. Are you following what I'm saying here? That's why I don't have to get into a healing meeting. I don't have to get into a miracle service. Blessed be God for all of these things. But I always tell people there are shunts, there are additions. Are you getting what I'm saying here? They are to help our faith. They are to help our joy. They are not to be our faith. They are not to be our joy. That's just helping it. Glory to God. And one of the things you can recognize and just realize, I got life on the inside of me. I mean, how, how can life be on the inside and there's any form of death, any form of infirmity, any form of sickness? This is what Christianity is about. Christianity is the celebration of life. That's what it is about. That's what Christianity is about. It's not just, you know, we're having a nice time, we're playing guitars and all the rest. No, it's the fact that somebody gained the mastery over death. So me, mastery over death. So spiritual death, that's where we're starting from, is an alienation from the life of God. That's Ephesians 4.18. You see that there in, in, in the text. A state of being alienated and separated from God and being one in union with the devil. So the unbeliever, and I need the church to get this, the unbeliever is one with Satan, in union with Satan. He's described as what? Darkness. Is somebody following what I'm saying? Here? This is important. Number two is physical death. That's the separation of a man's spirit and soul from his body. And that's the one we know of most times. We talk about, oh, the man, oh, this happened. This. But what you're describing is the separation of the man's spirit and soul from his body. Now, let's put the definition of death in this context. What is the generic definition of death? A disconnection from the source of life. What is the source of life of the human body? The spirit. You see that? For as faith without works is dead, so is the body without the spirit. You remember James saying that? The body is animated and granted life by who or by what? The spirit. So the moment the spirit checks out, what do we say? He's dead. Does not mean the man ceases to exist. You see that? Because the man still exists. Just that he does not um, exist as it were, uh, the, the, the bridge and the connection between the body and the spirit is broken. Uh, you get what I'm saying here? And now he cannot, he cannot animate, cannot give life to that body anymore. Is somebody getting what I'm saying here? This is important. And then the third one, theologically speaking, the third kind of death is what we call the second death. And this is an eternal separation of man from God. This is the, this is the worst this is the judgment that nobody should ever partake of. The eternal separation. And it's important that we remind ourselves as believers that this actually does exist. Are you following what I'm saying here? An eternal separation, all right, of a man from God. Please note what I'm saying here and write it down the exact same way. In a state... Where the life of God will be forever inaccessible to him. It's an eternal separation from God of a man. He's in that state where the life and the nature of God will be what? Forever. Say with me forever. Inaccessible to him. So when Jesus came, what he came to do was to gain mastery over what is called spiritual debt. Because all other debts are a product of spiritual debts. Because of spiritual debts, the physical body is subject to mortality. Are you getting what I'm saying here? Because the physical body was not created to be mortal. But it was subjected to mortality. And man, you observe the strength of that life. How that it took years upon years for the lifespan of man to reduce to about a hundred. Adam was 900 and something, and then you observe that as the years continued, the lifespan began to reduce. Why? Because it took that long for that life to be reduced to what it is today. Is somebody getting what I'm saying here? 
So the physical body was subject to what? Mortality by reason of the spiritual death that was in the spirit of Adam. Is somebody following what I'm saying? Yes. Now, everything we call needs, please stay with me, everything you call a need in your life today is a manifestation of spiritual death. Everything. You know why? Every need leads to death. <laughs> it's just how soon and how long. <laughs> Are you following what I'm saying here? Sickness is incipient death. The end goal of sickness is to kill. Poverty is <laughs> fast lane death. <laughs> you get what I'm saying? You get what I'm saying? Yes. Because if you're sick and you got some money, you can, you can buy some time. Yeah, yeah. yeah, money will fail eventually, but you can buy some time. But if you're poor, it's, it's really difficult. And you observe that poor people actually engage in lifestyles that eventually destroy them. Have you not? Now, let me put it this way. Let me put it this way. Um, can, I, ooh, can I say this? All right, I'll say it this way. There is an industry in, the, in, in Nigeria, there's an industry in Nigeria that most of them pass on, most of their stars pass on between 40-something and 60-something years of age. And this is proven over decades. Okay. Have you observed the movie industry? Have you observed that those in the entertainment music industry live longer than they do? Okay, how many of you know Evangelist Obe, Ebenezer Obe? Is he still alive? That's amazing. Have you even forgotten he's still alive? How many of you know Sonia Day? Now, I know you don't know all those guys. He's born a boy, and <laughs> that's what you guys know, and all the rest. Now, I just wanted to bring it to the natural. Now, the truth is, I can see some eyes looking at me. Who is that? Is that a, is that a type of bread? <laughs> Glory to God. Why do you think? Have you ever thought about it deeply? What, what do you think the problem is? Why do you think, the, on this other hand, you have these fellows who seem to be actors as well, and many of them, and it's a proven thing. It's not one, it's not two. It's proven over decades that these guys on this side live longer, and these guys on this side don't live long. Now, I got you where I want you. You're thinking. You ain't going to get bad thinking. That's why you're in church. <laughs> and you get what I'm saying? You know why? I can tell you for free. Many of the folks on this other side, they come into stardom. Hear this? Without the money to support stardom. On this other side, they come into stardom, but there's usually some resources to support that stardom. So you have a red carpet. The big star on this side and the big star on this side, they rub shoulders together, but they are not at the same level financially. So what happens? Because of poverty thinking, you find people who don't have the resources engaging in lifestyle to keep up with these other guys. You see, because poverty always wants to keep up. Somebody follow what I'm saying here? So you find more of these guys drinking, more of these guys living a wayward life. That's not to say it's not here. But for this person, it's a means of proving that I've arrived. And that's what poverty does. It helps you make stupid decisions to kill yourself, to destroy yourself. Is somebody listening to what I'm saying here? Hmm. So poverty is incipient debt, like Pastor Diola said, fast lane debt. I'm telling you the truth. Fast lane. For example, somebody says, you know, I'm afraid of airplanes and all the rest. I hope you know that that's the safest means of transportation. Yeah. So I, I, I have fight, flight phobia, but you are entering bus. <laughs> you are flying bike. I hope you know that bike is the highest mortality bike. Yet you enter the plane. Hey! Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. And you are holding your breath from the beginning of the flight to the end of the flight. Yet it's the safest. You see, poverty. You see how poverty deals with people's minds? Incipient death. So everything man has to deal with is a fruit of death in one form or the other. Are you following what I'm saying here? Look at what happens here. Romans chapter 5. Romans chapter 5. Glory to God. 
and the 12th verse. Romans chapter 5, the 12th verse. Hmm. Look at what it says. Can we read together one to go? Wherefore, as by one man, sin entered into the world, and, hold on, who opened the door? Who opened the door? Who opened the door? Sin. Come on. But was sin the real issue there? What entered? What was looking for an access? Death. Are, are you getting this here? So if I deal with that, I have dealt with sin. Is somebody getting what I'm saying here? And if you're not careful, good teaching will help you not receive even the best of God. Because good teaching in quotes may not be accurate. The focus here, and you're going to see this here. I, I want you to see the writing here. Wherefore as by one man sin entered into the world and death by sin. So death came by sin. He said, so death did what? Passed, what passed upon all men? Come on, talk to me. It was death that passed upon all men. He says, for that all have what? Did everybody sin? No, it was Adam that sinned. But Adam carried everyone in his loins. It was accounted. Now somebody said, how is it possible that God will account unto everyone the sin of Adam? The same way Levi paid tithes in the loins of Abraham. Hebrews, the seventh chapter, it says, Levi paid tithes in being in the loins of Abraham. And guess what? We were in the loins of Jesus. Uh, you follow what I'm saying? Look at what he says. He says, for that all have sinned. Look at verse 13, quickly. All right, everybody read. For until the law, sin was in the world, but sin is not imputed when there is no law. Next verse. Verse 14. Nevertheless, death reigned. Say with me, death reigned. From Adam to Moses, even over them that had not sinned after the similitude of Adam's transgression, who is the figure of him that was to come? Verse 15. Everybody read. But not as the offense, so also is the free gift. For if through the offense of one, many be, be sinners. Are you observing what Paul is trying to communicate? Because many times we read our mind into scriptures. He says, many be dead. Look at the next thing he says. Much more the grace of God and the gift by grace, which is by one man, Jesus Christ, hath what? Abounded unto what? Many. Look at verse 16. You'd love it. Want to go? And not as it was by one that sinned, so is the gift. For the judgment was by one to condemnation, but the free gift is of many offenses unto what? Justification. Verse 17, with a loud voice. For if by one man's offense death reigned by one, much more they which receive abundance of grace and of the gift of righteousness shall reign in... Hold on. When we say in life, many times we are saying, I will reign in my marriage, I will reign in my career, I will reign in my family. Read it in context. Reign in what was reigning before death. Come on now. Is somebody following what I'm saying here? That's the reason why we are going here. Because we are talking about absolute life. This is what Jesus brought. <laughs> he wasn't trying, you, you have to understand this, he wasn't trying to forgive a sinner. No. The forgiveness of our sins is included. But that's not all. Because we could have been forgiven and left sinners. Is somebody following what I'm saying? It's that life that he brought to us that changes everything completely. Glory to God. Let me show you two more scriptures. I told you I just wanted to read you scriptures, run some commentaries, and we release our faith this morning. Hallelujah. Say this, I'm alive. I'm alive. Come on, say it again. I'm alive. I'm alive. <laughs> Hebrews chapter 2, verse 14. I want you to see this. Two scriptures more. And we pray this morning. Hallelujah. Mm -mm. This is a beautiful one. Let's read together. I want to go. For as much then as the children are partakers of flesh and blood. Hold on. Let's read verse 13. Let's read verse 13 to give it context. To give it context. Good. Good. All right. I want to go. And again, I will put. Okay. Let's read verse 12 to give it more context, okay? Verse 12, okay? Let's read verse 11 to give it great context. All right, beautiful, I like this. But I think verse 10 will do. All right, verse 10, thank you. Good, beautiful. Mm. Mm. Some of you have not read your Bible today. It might just be the opportunity. But let's read verse... Who told you to turn? <laughs> I like it. This is beautiful. Put it there. 
Everybody want to go. But we see Jesus who was made a little lower than the angels for the suffering of death. Because he became a sinner? No. Why did he become a little lower than angels? For the suffering. I want you to understand something here. He says, crowned with glory and honor that he by the grace of God should. You are not reading it well. He should taste that for how many people? If he has tasted death, should we taste it in any form? And you know, the Lord, I asked the Lord this question because I, I, I tried to study around a lot of commentaries and all the rest, and I just wasn't making headway. This was years ago. I said, Lord, why did they use the word taste there? I saw the Greek word and all the rest, saw what some translations put and all the rest, and I said, Lord, why? And then the Lord said something to me. He said, you know, your tongue has different, it's not just one taste your tongue has. There's the sour part, there's the sweet part, there's this, there's that, there's that. So when he says taste, in whatever form, whatever shade death shows up, he, ah, come on now, is somebody hearing what? I'm saying here. He says that he tasted death for how many people? Every man. Okay, your own is sad death tested. <laughs> Are you getting what I'm saying here? Your own is hot death tested. Which means you have no right, no reason, no reason to partake of death in any form. No reason. I refuse to be sick. I refuse to be broke. I refuse to be confused. I refuse it in my life. You know why? He tested death for how many persons? Every man. Every man. Every man. Every man. Sit down for a bit. You love it. Look at the next verse there. My God. Go back there. Go, go back to verse 9. I think I'm rushing. Go back to verse 9. This is that kind of verse. You just sit down. You lock the door. You start screaming out in the Holy Ghost. They say, what's wrong? Mm, nothing. Nothing. Ah! My God. Some of you are screaming at mercy. Ronaldo is calling. You are screaming. What a shame. You are not screaming at this one. You are watching Z World. You will be crying. You are watching a movie that you know they acted. They say, ah, he's almost going to kill the actor. Hey, hey, hey. You are shouting. Then you come to church. Wow. Oh my God. Oh my gosh. We are saying somebody tasted death for you. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Hey, hey, hey. Hey. Chamaka, oh my gosh. Hey, then you do your hair like this. Oh my gosh. You do that. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Jesus, you just. Oh <laughs> Jesus. You blew my mind. Herein lies the problem. If you don't express your emotions for Jesus, you will, swear, you will express it for Satan. It's a matter of time. That's why you see people crying. Oh, Jesus, help me. Help me. When you ought to be celebrating, rejoicing, get excited at what he has done for you. <laughs> Sit down for a bit. Sit down for a bit. He says that he should what? Taste death for every man. Say with me, for every man. Say with me, for every man. You've got to understand what Easter is about. It is the domination of life over death. That's what Easter is about. When he came out from that grave, you, you've got to get this. All of heaven was standing. The angels were standing. Demons were standing. Everybody was watching. This is the last final bounce. The last victory. If this happens, it's over. It's over for the devil. It's, are you getting what I'm saying here? If this happens, then God has the victory forever. It's over. It's over. It's over. It's the final kick. Over. And guess what? All of a sudden. Ta, 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 ta. My God, my God. Can somebody give me African magic? Bang, 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 bang. <laughs> Look at verse 10. Hebrews 2 verse 10. Come on now. He says, for it became him. You'd love this. You'd love it. For whom are how many things? All things. And by whom are Aya. Hey, I want to remove my shoe. Hey, hey, hey. In bringing many sons unto glory to make the captain of their salvation perfect through the cross. To make him perfect through the cross. Look at what he says. You love the next verse, verse 11. For, ah, yeah. 
Okay. He says, for both he that sanctified and they who are sanctified are all of one. Hold on. Let me explain what it means. It's the, the tailor's stem, fashion designer's stem. In essence, the same clothes they used to sew, him that sanctifies. It's the same clothes we used to sew, him that is sanctified. In essence, it's not a case of this is he that sanctified. He's higher, he's the bigger one. No, no, no. When you look at the sanctifier and you look at the sanctified, you can't see no difference. Are you hearing what I'm saying here? No difference whatsoever. He that sanctified and he that is sanctified. They are one. They are one. They are one. Are you hearing what I'm saying here? They are one. My God. Let me explain what it means. When diabetes looks at Jesus, he says, no, go area. He looks at you. He's not seeing you. He's seeing Jesus. Are you hearing what I'm saying here? Why? He that sanctifies and he that sanctified. Hmm. For which cause he's not ashamed to call them brethren. My God. This is the testimony of Jesus concerning us. He says he's not ashamed to call us brethren. Look at the next verse there. You love it. You love it. Say now declare thy name unto my brethren. Hiya. We are now the brethren. This is Jesus talking. We are now the brethren. Are you following what I'm saying here? Hiya. He says, in the midst of the church, will I sing praise unto thee? This is where I was going to. Now, let me get to my point now. <laughs> Verse 13. All right. He says, again, I'll put my trust in him. Behold, look, see, look, look, I and the children which God had given me. In essence, Jesus is making a sure of us. He says, look, look, I and the children that God has given me. He's talking about you. He's so bold so boastful, so proud of you. Why, are you. why are you wallowing in your guilt? Why are you wallowing in your doubt? You are saying, oh God, I just wish, I just wish. Jesus didn't see my children. You, you can imagine that. You can imagine that. And the devil is asking, which children? Is it the ones that are not seeing themselves? With a loud voice, shout it. He that sanctifies, and he that is sanctified. All of one. Mama, mama. I cannot be sick. I cannot. I cannot. I cannot. I cannot. I cannot. Is somebody hearing what I'm saying? I cannot be confused one day of my life. No. I cannot be broke one day of my life. No. You know why? He that sanctified and they that are sanctified, they are all of one glory to God. All of one. My God. I, you have to calm down. I need to get to where I'm going to. Sit down, sit down, sit down, sit down, sit down. We've got to get to where I'm going to. He says, behold, I am the children which God had given me. Verse 14, quickly, verse 14. Now, stay here. He says, for as much then as these children I'm talking about are partakers of flesh and blood. They are not, they are not, they are spirits, but they have a physical body. He says, he also himself likewise took part of the same. Talking about Jesus, the kenosis of the Christ. He emptied himself of the glory that he had with the Father. Became one with us, identified with us. He didn't come as a savior from outside. Oh, no, he identified with us. They asked Billy Graham, can you explain salvation in a small, in, in, in the simplest way? He says, salvation is like this. Think of a maze, a big maze. He says, and you know how that the maze is so um, uh, convoluted and you don't know how to get to the door. He says, and there's this little ant in the maze, lost, trying to find its way in that maze. He said, the world is like that maze. We are like the ants trying to find our way through the world. He said, think of yourself as this big human you are. You, you then put your hand in to pick the ant and take it to the door. He said, because you are so big, you will scare the ant. Because you are so big, your hand may even kill the ant. So what do you do if you want to help the ant? You become an ant. You go into the maze. And then you lead the ant out. Are you hearing what I'm saying here? That's what he did. He didn't come as God. He came as man. Is somebody getting what I'm saying here? He identified in flesh and blood with us. That's what he did. 
He says, look at this. He also himself likewise took part of the same. That true, aya. Hey. He took Satan's own instrument to destroy Satan. That's what God prophesied. He said, the seed of the woman shall bruise the head of the serpent. But the serpent will bruise the heel of the seed. In essence, the serpent will bruise the heel and say, yes, we are bruising. But he does not know that as you are bruising the heel, that thing is called the cross. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. On the cross, the serpent, the seed of the serpent taught, yes, we are bruising the heel of the seed of the son of the woman. Yes, we are bruising the heel. So they have the victory, but there's a second part. Then the seed of the woman will cross, will cross, will cross, will cross, will cross, will cross. Go right to God. So the same cross that looked like the victory of Satan became the victory of the church. Somebody hearing what I'm saying here? Look at what he says. He says, through death, through Satan's own instruments, he will destroy him that had, 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 had. Hey, Revelation chapter 1. We'll come back here. Please just put a page marker here. We'll come back here. I told you I just wanted to have a good time with you guys this morning. Are you getting anything? Are you getting anything? Are you getting anything? Mm. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Look at Revelation chapter 1 and verse... Um, oh dear, I have to get you that text there. Yeah, verse 17. Revelation 1 verse 17. We're going to come back to Hebrews. He says, and when I saw him, I fell at his feet as dead. And he laid his right hand upon me, saying unto me, Fear not, I am the first and the last. I am he that liveth. And was... Now, you know this death is not just... You get what that dead is now. Spiritual death. I am he that liveth and was dead. And behold, I am alive. How? Forevermore. Read the next sentence. And have the keys of hell and of death. Who has the keys of hell and of death? Come on, talk to me. Who has the keys of hell and of death? So here, this, if I see any manifestation of death, it's an illegal one. Are you getting what I'm saying? Yeah, it's illegal. Why? He will never use the keys on me. He will never use the keys. Come on now. Hmm. That's why I can't take no sickness. Somebody says it's just a little headache. No, no, no. No, there's nothing like a little headache. No, my body functions in perfection. Glory to God. My organs are right. My muscles are right. Glory to God. My eyesight is perfect. Glory to God. Are you hearing what I'm saying here? Yes, sir. Hmm. Go back to Hebrews. You love it. Hebrews. Ah, are you getting anything? Yes, <laughs> he says, for as much then as the children... Are partakers of flesh and blood, he also himself likewise took part of the same. That through death, he might destroy him that had the power of death. That is the devil. He had it. So how then does he inflict his goodies on believers today? You see it in the next verse. Verse 15. Everybody read. And deliver them who through? Not power. Not power. Why are people in bondage all their lifetime? Fear of death, not power. Fear of death, not power. Hey. Is somebody walking out of poverty today? Is there anybody walking out of lack and want today? Say this, I refuse to be poor. I refuse to be broke. I refuse to be sick. I refuse to be in lack. I refuse it. I refuse it. Glory to God. Pray in the Holy Ghost where you are. Pray in the Holy Ghost where you are. There are so many things I can share with you this morning. But I sense a lifting at this point. Pray in the Holy Ghost where you are. We are not beggars. We are not beggars. No, it's our right. 
He's purchased it for us. We are not beggars. We are not beggars. We are not beggars. We are not beggars. I want you to pray in the Holy Ghost for the next one minute. We are not beggars. I want you to pray in the Holy Ghost for the next one minute. We are not beggars. We are not beggars. We are not beggars. The miracles are happening already. Light and truth is delivering your inheritance. Light and truth is delivering your inheritance to you. Light and truth is delivering your inheritance to you. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Just a second. Romans chapter 6 verse 4. I want you to see it. You see, because the miracles are happening already. Light and truth is delivering to you your inheritance. Everybody read. Want to go. Therefore. Please make it personal. Don't read for everybody. Therefore, I am buried with him by baptism into death that like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also shall walk in newness of life. Say this, even also, I should walk in newness of life like as Christ was raised up from the dead. Do you see that? What did he say of himself in Revelations 1 where we read? He said, I am he that was dead. He says, I'm alive and I'm alive how? Forevermore. Say with me newness of life. Say with me newness of life. Say with me newness of life. Now we're going to do something. You're going to lift your two hands towards heaven. Two minutes. With all eyes closed and with all violence and all intensity. You're going to pray out loud in the Holy Ghost. Make no requests. There's revelation. There's light burning in your spirit now. There's light and revelation burning in your spirit now. As we pray in the Holy Ghost, we are raising an altar of light. An altar of truth. An altar of revelation. The anointing is going to come upon some of you. The glory of God will overshadow some of you. That's the Lord doing a work in your life. If you are connected online, go ahead and pray in the Holy Ghost. Go ahead and pray in the Holy Ghost. Newness of life in your finances, in your health, every area of your life. Any and everything representing death is cursed to its roots. You have one minute more. Pray out louder, 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 louder. Pray out louder wherever you are. Pray out louder wherever you are. The Holy Ghost is doing a work. The Holy Ghost is doing a work. In the name, in the name of Jesus, I stand today in the fullness of my office. Any manifestation of death anything any manifestation of death any fruit of death in whatever form that you have tasted that you are experiencing right now let that life overflow let that life swallow it up in the name of Jesus I curse the infirmity to its roots I curse the sickness to its roots in the name of Jesus, right now, let there be miracles. Every need, everyone's miracles. Angels, go forth now. 
miracles, miracles, miracles in your finances, in your body, in your career. Miracles, 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 miracles in the name of Jesus. Keep those hands lifted towards heaven. I curse every growth in your body. Every growth in your body, whatever name it is called. Right now, I command it to dematerialize. There are lumps that are dematerializing right now. My God, what an anointing of the Holy Ghost. There are lumps that are dematerializing right now. There are growths that are dematerializing right now. I command that bone infirmity to be gone from you in the name of Jesus. I rebuke that sinus condition. I command your sinuses to be open in the name of Jesus. I rebuke that blood condition. I command that spirit of infirmity be gone from their bodies in the name of Jesus. Somebody pray aloud in the Holy Ghost. 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 Every tormenting spirit from the pit of hell, those voices, those dreams of the night, I command them right now in the name of Jesus. Check out of their bodies, check out of their minds in the name of Jesus. That crawling sensation under your skin, I command that demon, check out of that body now. In the name of Jesus. That heart condition. You get tired so easily. Just a little exertion and then you get tired. Who is that person? Wave your hand at me if you are that person. You get tired so easily. Just a little exertion and then you are tired. If you are waving it, please wave it well. So I know I am praying for you. I can see that hand. I command strength into your heart now. I rebuke that infirmity. I rebuke that affliction. I command it to be gone in the name of Jesus. Pray in the Holy Ghost where you are. 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 Now, that transient loss of consciousness. All of a sudden, you, you just wake up and you find out that I have forgotten where I am. You are in the moment, in the moment, in one second, and then all of a sudden, for a couple of seconds and all the rest, you just realize that I don't even know where I am. It's almost as though something, transient moments, transient moments, transient moments. Now, I lay my hands upon you in the name of Jesus, thou devil. You know whose I am. You know who I serve. You know who I am. I stand in the authority of the name of Jesus. I decree, let that mind be healed. In the name of Jesus. Never again. Never again. Never again. Never again. Never again. Never again. There are many of you here who have labored and labored and labored but your labor has not produced to the level that is expected. You have labored. This is not about being lazy. You have toiled and you have labored. You have toiled and you have labored. I stand here today in the fullness of my office. I decree a new day is open over your life. A day of abundance and increase. In the name of Jesus. 
Thank you, Heavenly Father. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Now, if you came here with an infirmity, check your body. Go ahead and check your body. Whatever it is you could not do before, go ahead and begin to do it. Go ahead and check your body. Whatever infirmity you came here with is gone. Whatever infirmity you came here with is gone. Go ahead and check your body. Go ahead and do something you could not do before. Go ahead and do something you could not do before. Very quickly, let me take one. One person, you're checking yourself and you can't find that thing again. Quickly, just one person for the sake of time. You're checking your body and you can't find that infirmity again. Something you came with into the auditorium. And then you can't find it again. Anybody like that quickly? You want to share with us. Hey, this is what I came with. This is the infirmity. This is what was happening in my body. Check myself. I can't find it anymore. Anybody like that quickly? Quickly. Quickly. Go ahead and check your body. Go ahead and check your body. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for healings and thank you for miracles. Yes, we give you praise. We give you praise. There's a lady there. Please come quickly. There's another person I'm waiting. There's another person. There's someone else, go ahead and check your body. Go ahead and check your body. You came in with an infirmity in your body. Completely gone from you. You can't find it. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for healings. Thank you for miracles. Oh, we give you praise. We give you praise. We give you praise. You've checked yourself. There's somebody else there as well. I am a child of God. I'm a slave to Jesus. I Oh, yes, I am. We just take one to very quickly. One to very quickly. So, when she sits down for long, whenever she sits down for long, she feels the pain on this side of her body. And she's been feeling it since October. She came here feeling the pain, but as we were praying, the pain left totally. So, when you sit down for long, describe what happens. Talk to me. Okay, what so happens? I just feel peppery sensation or slight pain, and sometimes it feels numb. So, I, I was actually feeling it while I was sitting down during the message, but during the prayer, as you prayed for infirmity, I tried to just twist the leg a bit and I didn't feel it. Amazing. I mean, if you can heal somebody, then you won't be rejoicing. But if you know this is the hand of the Lord, come on, give Him praise. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Your healing is made perfect in the name of the Lord Jesus. Yes, we give you praise. We bless you. There's one more person. One more person. Come on. There's one more person. There's one, not, not just this lady. There's one more person. Who is that person? Oh, okay. Good. 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 Where's the person with the lump? There was a lump that dematerialized. You're the one. Fantastic. Can you tell me? What's that? Tell me. Tell me. What's that? Talk to me, Pastor, what happened there? She said she had a lump in her left, left groin region, and it totally disappeared. How long have you had it? Well, since 2016. Hold on. She's had the lump since 2016. Yes, sir. That's eight years now. And in one moment, with the anointings, the lump disappeared. In one moment with the anointing, the lump disappeared. You know why it had to disappear? He that sanctifieth and he that is sanctified is one. This Jesus, there is no lump in him. There can be no lump in our body. There's someone with an ear condition. There's a, there's a hair condition that just got healed now. Where's that person? There's a hair condition that just got healed now. Thank you, Lord. There's a hair condition that just got healed. There's a hair condition that just got healed. Go ahead and check yourself. Go ahead and test the air. Just got healed by the power of the Holy Spirit. Just got healed by the power of the Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Oh, thank you. Thank you for the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Thank you for the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Yes, we give you praise. Talk to me. What's happening there? So she had a muscle pull. Yeah, I went swimming on Saturday, on Friday, and I had like, I literally had, they had to carry me out on the pole. So I've been feeling the pains. I couldn't wear proper shoes because I just needed to be comfortable. I didn't think about it as anything, but I knew I, the pain has been 
there, even yesterday evening, and I can't feel anything. Like when I touch my legs, it actually hurts, but I can't feel anything. I didn't think that anything like let, that let would me happen to me. Just a second. Let me help us. You know, sometimes people think that some miracles are small. I'll tell you why you never should make that mistake. That could progress into something. And then when it becomes really big, we start seeking intervention from God. But the Lord nipped it in the bud early enough. Come on, let's give him praise. Let's give him praise. Let's give him praise. Oh, thank you, Lord. Let's lift our hands and bless the Lord. Let's lift, let's lift our hands and bless the Lord. Thank you, Lord. Lift your hands and bless him. Where's the air condition? I know when I hear the Lord. Where's the, just a second, quickly, quickly. Somebody will say, Pastor, why are you stressing? Where's the air? You are the one. Why are you delaying? Come, 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 come. Thank you. What ear is it? This ear. Is it that has, the right or the left? Left. That's left. your left ear. Okay. It has been aching me for some time. And I, I don't even think I really took that anything. But every minute, I'm always removing my earrings. It was until you even said that I noticed that I removed my earrings and I checked and I realized that the pain is gone. It's gone completely. Yes, sir. Amazing. Amazing. <laughs> Amazing. Hmm. That same healing power is healing your business. Yes. Miracles in your business. Miracles in your finances. Miracles everywhere. In the mighty name of the Lord Jesus. Yes. There's an online virtual testimony. Yes, Tell me. Sir. Someone has been healed of sinus condition. Sinus Watching condition. Watching on YouTube, sir. Watching on YouTube. Yes. Amazing. <laughs> What's the person's name? Just give me the first name. Ortega Okirigo. Ortega, congratulations. <laughs> congratulations. Hallelujah. Oh, thank you, Lord. And let me tell you something. Please listen very carefully to me. The supernatural is not the exclusive preserve of any man. No. We are all called to be workers of miracles. All of us. There is nothing that has happened here that God cannot do through you. Did you hear what I said? Yes. What determines manifestation is the strength of light. The strength of light. The strength of light is called according to the power that worketh in us. Not according to his power, but according to the power that worketh in us. I decree and I declare you are leaving this place walking miracles. The Bible tells us that the same power that raised Jesus from the dead now dwells in us. The very same power. That very same power. Let that power, that life, from the crown of your head to the soles of your feet, cleanse you of all infirmities, all addictions. In the name of Jesus, Thank you, Heavenly Father. We give you praise. Are you glad you came today? Come on, look at the person beside you and say, Happy Resurrection. <laughs> look at three more persons and tell them, Happy Resurrection Life. Happy Resurrection Life. Now, that last person, hold them by the hand. Tell them, Never forget. He that sanctifies and he that is sanctified are all of one. Say this, you are one with Jesus. Come on, say it. You are joined to the Lord. You are one spirit. Shout it, I'm alive. Now, we are going to do a dance, a shout, a run, a praise. Shout it, I'm alive. Yeah, glory, I'm alive, come on, I'm alive, yeah, yeah, are you alive, are you alive, yeah. has no place here. I'm alive. 
Glory to God. Ah, <laughs> hey, I'm alive. Oh, hallelujah. Come on, sit down if you can sit down. Oh, my God. Ah, I'm alive. God's servant said, all through this week, that should be your declaration. I'm alive. When you wake up tomorrow morning, the first thing that comes out of your mouth is, I'm alive! Hallelujah! Glory to God. Oh, praise God. Praise God. What a service. Oh, hallelujah. Ah, Pastor, there was a testimony. The same Ortega, he said that um, his ears was blocked and the ears opened up. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Miracles, miracles, and miracles. Hallelujah. Oh, praise God. I'm trying to calm myself down. <laughs> Hallelujah. God it says, I'm alive! Hey! Ayah! Woo! The life of God is bubbling on the inside of me. Ayah! Hey! Ah, the enemy is in trouble. I'm alive. No poverty, no sickness, no infirmity, no lack. I'm alive. Yes. Yeah. Thank you, Lord, for life. <laughs> Woo. God bless you. You can have your seat. Oh, newness of life newness of life hallelujah ah father we thank you it's time to give our tithes and our offerings we'll start with the tithe petra believes the giving of the tithe is our first foremost and foundational way to honor god in and with our finances if you're here this morning and you would like to give your tithe or you made a transfer during the week please rise as we say a prayer over our tithe Malachi chapter 3 verse 10. The Bible says, Bring one-tenth of your income into the storehouse so that there may be food in my house. Test me in this, in this way, says the Lord of armies. See if I won't open the windows of heaven for you and flood you with blessings. Hallelujah. Let's take this prayer together. Say with me. Say, Father, I stand here before you in acknowledgement of your blessing upon my life. I return to say, I have prospered and increased only because you have blessed me. Now I bring my seed to you as an act of honor and of faith. I ask that there be an outpouring of rain upon the work from which I have brought you this tithe in honor of your name. Say, I declare that the heavens are open over me and you grant me divine insights, concepts and ideas this week that a clear distinction be upon the works of my hands in Jesus' name. Give your tithes like someone that is alive. Hallelujah. It's time to give our offerings. Can you rise to join them? 2 Corinthians chapter 9 verse 8 says, And God is able to make all grace abound toward you, that you always having all sufficiency in all things may abound to every good work. Say a word of prayer over your offering. Say a word of prayer over your offering. Hallelujah. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for you would make all grace abound toward us. We enjoy your sufficiency and we are bound unto every good work in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. You can give your offerings as you have your seats. God bless you. Oh, hallelujah. I'm alive. Praise God. Do kindly listen to the following announcement. Join our daily watchman prayer hour with Pastor Ayo Ajani. Praise God. 
And the theme is mercy and provision. 6 a.m. West African time. Praise God. Join us on Mixella. Praise God. Join us on Mixella. 6 a.m. West African time. Praise the Lord. With God's servant on Mixella at Petra Christian Center. Mondays to Fridays. Global midweek service on Wednesday by 6 p.m. West African time. If you're joining us from any part of the world, you can follow the service on any of our streaming platforms. Watch our with God's servant, Pastor Ayo Ajani, is from April the 1st to April the 3rd, and the time is 11 p.m. West African time. Hallelujah. Watchtower, it's a time that we pray together with God's servant. We are praying over the month of April. Hallelujah. We're going to be framing the month of April, and it's exclusively virtual on YouTube at official Ayo Ajani. And on Mixelar at Petra Christian Center. Praise God. If you are in the city of Accra, join us for Total Immersion Accra with Pastor Ayo Ajani. Hallelujah. If you are in the city of Accra, and the date is the 5th and 6th of April. The time is 5 p.m. GMT. And the venue is Redemption House, East Legon, Sasso Street, Accra, Ghana. Hallelujah. Glory to God. If you're worshiping with us for the first time, we would like to welcome you very specially. Can you please signify by raising up your hand if you're worshiping with us for the first time? Come on, we have some. Oh, you're welcome. You're welcome. If you're around them, welcome them to church. Welcome them to church. You are so welcome. We love you. Thank you for coming. Thank you for coming. We welcome you so specially on behalf of God's servant, Pastor Ayo, and our co-senior pastor, Pastor Diola Ajani. Thank you so very much for coming. We have a warm reception for you. If you, look, if you look at the back, you'll see a lady with a prop. Please take your bags, your Bibles, everything you came to church with, and please go behind. Church, let's give them a big round of applause. Hallelujah. Oh, we love you. Hallelujah. Church, can we rise up to close the service? It's time to say our mantra. Praise God. You will say the mantra like somebody that is alive. Hallelujah. I am Petra. I am built solid on the rock of the world that never fails. I am Petra. My faith is active and produces great results. I am Petra. My hopes are fadeless. For I dream new dreams every day. I am Petra. I am an extension of the love and character of Jesus to my world. Slap your neighbor, high five, and say, I am Petra. God bless you. See you at the Global Midweek Service. Happy Easter.
that's gonna hold you down. Oh, 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 oh. 